Hello, my name's Emily from the Bell Foundation and in this video we're going to see Ms Kay, a history teacher from Trinity Academy Leeds, teaching a Year 7 class. 22 out of the 28 learners in the class use English as an additional language and over 16 different languages are spoken in total. The focus of the lesson is to evaluate and think about the way that Queen Elizabeth I was portrayed in contemporary sources. Let's take a look at some of the strategies that Ms Kay uses to support her learners develop their English alongside curriculum content. I'm really conscious of the fact that I want to be really aspirational of them and the language that they use in my classroom, but I obviously know that there are barriers, not just to multilingual learners, but just to, to everyone possibly being able to understand everything that I'm saying. And I think for me, I have really high expectations of them and the way that they phrase themselves and the way that they think about the words that they're using. What can we see that tells us that they're quite wealthy? What can we see that tells us that they're wealthy? It's all about, I think, in history, the balance between teaching them the words really deeply so that they don't have any misconceptions about it and they're able to use it, but also balancing it with curriculum time. And I do often wish that I did have maybe a little bit more time in order to be able to do that. But, you know, my colleagues in English are such a, a benefit because they obviously see them so much more. And at the moment, our curriculums kind of overlap. So they're teaching Romeo and Juliet and we're teaching Elizabethan England. And that was obviously deliberately planned. The next portrait that we're going to look at is a little bit different. And it's all about power. Elizabeth is a woman in a patriarchal society. Now, we've come across that word patriarchy before, both in history and in English. So words like patriarchal, you know, I know that the English department have really gone deep into like Latin roots and things like that with like pater, like, you know, from the Latin. So it's really helpful to have colleagues who are really supportive in other subjects. So, so there's quite a lot that we do to scaffold and obviously you know, uh, especially at the beginning of the year, but also just like consistently throughout as well. You know, if I feel like students need to pause and, you know, really think about how they're writing, I will do things under the visualizer. So again, I'll just have lined paper and I'll take them through it and I'll, you know, carefully craft questions so that I'm not actually writing it. The students are, I'm just, again, putting it into kind of an, an appropriate way. But I do also know that they're 12 and 13 and sometimes me saying you know things in a really sophisticated manner might not always sink in and that is okay but that comes down to me as the teacher and as the expert of this historical time period but also the expert I guess of language in the room to be able to phrase it in a way that they understand and then build up from there. Visualizers are small cameras that are attached to a kind of stand and they kind of illuminate behind us on the board what we're doing underneath it. So I find it really good for guided practice and deliberate practice with the students. And you know, we do guided reading and I do it under the visualizer to show the students where we are. And there's a lot of evidence about kind of students being able to monitor and look at the words as well. So, you know, visualizers help us with that. But obviously as a historian, you know, annotating sources, that's something that we can do on the visualizer. And we did some of that in the lesson that I've just taught. And we're going to annotate this portrait. Now we've annotated things in the past, but let's just go through this again. So when I say annotate, I mean, you're gonna take your pencil and your ruler, you're gonna draw a line from the feature, and then you're gonna write a little note about it. So for example, I might put here crown. That's important, I can see a crown. Now, again, I might use my ruler, draw down here, and I might put the word globe. Okay. As a history teacher, in year seven in particular, I only get to see my students once a week. For any student, sometimes that one week gap can be quite a lot. So using visuals as prompts is really helpful, not only for multilingual learners, but just for you know any student just to help activate uh, retrieval practice. So I do use it quite frequently and it helps to break down definitions as well. And Spain was a really strong country, it was really, really strong. 
I do quite like to use hand gestures and things like that. So peace, you know, prosperity. It's it's a really good way, I think, of you know, attaching actions to to words, which helps students as a bit of an aid memoir. They wanted to get rid of her, but they wanted to see who was the strongest, the most strong. We do I say you say quite a lot. So again, that just practices it, you know, for all students who might not be as confident. I say you say really like gets them to feel it in their mouth. They understand what it is. You know, sometimes we'd say it multiple times if it's a really tricky word. And, um, you know, then we define it, then we might put it in a sentence, you know, we, we did that today with the word contemporary just because I needed them to be able to understand it. So the first thing we need to think about is this word contemporary. I say contemporary, you say contemporary. Good. Now, the word contemporary means the Spanish sent an armada, a group of ships to invade England. I say armada, you say armada. I say armada, you say armada. Now, an armada is a group of ships, yeah, a huge group of ships. Good, fantastic, and I really like the way you've corrected yourself there. He didn't change their religion, they were still Christian, but he changed their sect to Protestant. I say Protestant, you say? Protestant. Good. So actually, Elizabeth was Protestant, that is true. Then we might do a bit of a true and false quiz to see if they've got the correct application and things like that. So it's also just really, a really good experience for everyone to be able to use those words confidently. I get them to write first, speak, and then change. And again, coming back to my point about confidence, I really feel like the whiteboard allows students to be a little bit more creative and a little bit explorative with the language and the way they're shaping sentences because it's non-committal. So I'd like you to get your whiteboard in front of you, please. They don't like something, they can wipe it down. Whereas I feel like going straight to book sometimes is a bit restrictive because they worry so much about what they're writing that maybe they don't think about you know the knowledge or, or they worry too much about the knowledge and they don't quite get the writing right whereas actually on a whiteboard it's really flexible so I tend to use whiteboards quite a lot in the initial planning stage of extended pieces of writing I'd like you to finish this sentence please on your whiteboard something that is contemporary to 2023 is so something that was made in the year 2023 is now I've got some pictures just in case you need a little bit of help Obviously, I need to make that accessible to everyone. So I use sentence stems as a way to make sure that they've got the start of the sentence. And most of the time, if I don't have it on the board, I'll say it. So like if I've not got it, I will give them like a sentence starter. And again, I find that it just increases confidence because they can kind of just parrot it back to me. On your whiteboard, I'd like you to pick one of these sentences and you're going to compare and contrast the portrait. So you're going to say, on the one hand, source B shows on the other hand, source C shows. You could pick another one, source B shows, whereas source C shows, or source B shows, in contrast, source C shows, okay? So we're comparing and contrasting these two portraits. I'd like you to close over your booklet, please. You're going to pick one sentence and you're going to write it on your whiteboard. I'm going to give you one minute to do that now, thank you. No, you're okay. As we move, through the years, you know, so obviously that was a year seven class, but if you saw me with a year eight class, it's quite different because they have started to adopt to like understand how I expect them to speak. And it's because I've modeled it really consistently for, you know, 18 months now for them. So they get to see it in action every day, which is good. I hope you found this video useful. Do you use any similar strategies in your class? Or did you see any strategies that you'd like to adopt? To find out more about some of the strategies from the video, you might want to look at the Bell Foundation Great Ideas pages. You can find the links in the description below.